Welcome back to the channel. We are on a grand adventure today. This is a summer trip that we like to take annually. Alaska is a huge state, as you may already know. It's fantastic in the summer. There are salmon everywhere. That's the purpose of our trip today. We are doing some fishing, some exploring. We are down on the Kenai Peninsula. This is a favorite spot of mine to stop, but we timed it a little bit too early and there's no salmon spawning yet. So there's nothing to look at here, but the direction we're headed, there are plenty of fish. We're gonna get going. It is raining, unfortunately, but we are still going to have fun. Well, we thought we were escaping the rain coming down here, but it followed us. So it's raining right now. It's supposed to clear up. We're heading to a little toll booth right now. You have to pay to go through this tunnel. We're going to a town called Whittier. This is the only way in and out of this town, besides boat, I guess, or airplane. This is the only way to drive in and out of this town. So let's pay our toll. We gotta wait, I think about 20 minutes before we can go through. Here we go, 1230 sharp. They're letting us through and this tunnel's long. It, I, it didn't exactly say, but I believe it's almost two miles long. It's a single lane, so traffic goes through the way we're going. It also comes the other way and the train also goes through this tunnel. It's a, it's a pretty cool little tunnel. Okay, this is Whittier, we made it. We have actually never been here when there's this many people here. It is full on tourist season, so there's a lot of folks around and I think we're gonna start our adventure down at the Boat Harbor. I'm thinking the jet skis looks pretty awesome right about now. We've only been to Whittier twice. This was our third time and once was in the winter. That was pretty neat. This is totally like a hotspot destination because there's a lot to do from here. I've never done really anything around here that you can do, but there's waterfalls, glaciers. They can take you out for fishing. There's ferries, a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of boats. And we are actually here for some fishing. So that is what we are heading off to do. Biscuit, literally called sea biscuit. Oh, wait, what the heck? We went the wrong way. Here's what's going on. We don't know where we're going. One road in this town, and we're lost. this one. What do you say? Get a fishing gear off? Let's go fishing. In the rain.
pink salmon fishing. That's what we're going for. They also call them humpies. We have our, we call these our pike fishing poles. These are pretty good poles. They're pretty strong and they have 10 pound line on them. These aren't the craziest fish when it comes to fighting. So we should be able to bring them in no problem with these. And we're using spinners. We got a few different kinds. I think I'm gonna start with this really cool one right here with the little squid on the end. So Arrow wanted the MEPS, so she's got a pink MEPS with a little uh, black feather on the back. And this place is called Emerald Cove. We actually came out here last year, but it was about a month later in the season. And this place was just full of spawned out pink salmon. I mean, like thousands. It was probably one of the most crazy things I've ever seen. Right now, since we're earlier, the fish are gonna be fresher. So they're not as spawned out. They're more just straight out of the ocean. They're gonna taste better. The only thing that sucks though, is there's less of them in here right now. So we're gonna use our spinners this time and hopefully we can entice one of those things to bite. They're out. Look to the channel to the left. We were hoping to catch this place at high tide, but we're actually here at low tide. So once the tide comes in, these fish are going to come in and there should be a lot more in this cove. It's the third one I've hooked. I'm hoping I can get it in. I found the technique. They're not like in a smooth spinning motion with this spinner. They're like in a real sharp jerk. And that's usually what gets them and it's, it's working. That's the biggest pink I've ever seen. That's a huge pink. Nice fish. Yeah, he's Okay, okay, he's a strong one. So that is a pink salmon or a humpy. That's a male. You can tell by that hump that it's starting to form on his back. And throughout the spawning process of these fish, that hump on his back will get absolutely huge. And this is the first fish of the trip. A nice pink salmon. We're gonna keep this one. Okay, so that's a female pink salmon. Looks, looks a lot different than the male. And you may notice I hooked this one in the back. A lot of creeks, like our local one, you have to put these ones back. But since we are in salt water in this certain area, you're actually allowed to snag these fish. We're not trying to snag them, but we did snag this one, but we can keep this one. Well, I switched from mine, which was a single hook, to Ariel's, which was a treble hook, and it was a pink one, and they were loving that one. I was getting all kinds of bites. And unfortunately, I snagged on a rock, and I thought it was a fish, so I went to set the hook, and it snapped it off. So we have another one here. It's got a little bit of pink. This one's pink and silver. I think this is a Vibrax number five. I'm gonna give this one a go and see if we can catch another one. They're jumping out here like crazy. It's just insane. this one out a little. Pinks are, they're not the most sought after fish here in Alaska. Out of all the species of salmon we have, they do taste good, they taste great. They're really good canned and smoked, they're great for dog food, and they are like an absolute blast to catch because you get a lot of action. I've hooked probably 30 fish 
and I brought in two. Errol has got one. That's a nice looking pink in his mouth. Big teeth, cool colors. All right, we are having a total blast out here. We are actually allowed six fish each, but we do not need to keep that many because we are here for the experience and we have more fishing to do. I wanted to point out something that's really cool about these pink salmon is their black spots on the top of their body and on their fin. Not all salmon have that. We have five different kinds here, so that's a good identification way if you can't tell by the hump that they get. It was really neat out here today. We got to see some wildlife. There was a mom sea otter that's feeding her babies. Really, really cool to witness that. That's a first for us. We have to hurry up because we're gonna try and catch the tunnel on the way back. We have more things to do and it is starting to rain again. It's 5.04, we made it here just a couple minutes ago, just in time. The light just turned green, and we're gonna head through the mountain to the other side. Coffee time, part one. Got our little stove that we always bring with us, but we got something new we're gonna try today. It's these little uh, thermoses, but they have built-in French press sounds kind of weird but i'll show you what i mean so it's a thermos and you got like a little plunger with a screen on it um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna fill these up with hot water put our coffee in there we'll put the cap on to keep it hot and maybe like 10 minutes or so we'll put cream and sugar and we'll use this to plunge the coffee grounds down to the bottom i guess and we'll put our lid on and we'll have some java we need it it's been a long day i think it's like five o'clock already and we got a lot of plans and excitement for this trip, so we're just gonna keep on going. Check out this salad. This has like 10 different ingredients from the garden. That's gonna be our lunch slash dinner. That's something that we do to help keep these types of trips a little low cost is bringing the majority of our own food. And we also like to sleep in what we call is our Tundra Inn. So that will be our home for the night. First time using these. I think the ideal way would be let them sit for a while and then when you push the little plunger down then put your cream and sugar but we're gonna get in the truck and go and we're not gonna stop again so I'm gonna put the cream and sugar in now and we'll just take the little plungers in the truck there we go let's pack back up we're gonna hit the road coffee well we have officially made it to Alaska's Kenai Peninsula been raining on and off pretty much this whole trip, but there is blue skies ahead. And we have about an hour further to go to our next stop, which is the town of Cooper Landing. And we're gonna go see if we can see some wildlife there. Eric and I are at the Brescian River and we are headed to the falls. The falls is where you can see salmon jumping and sometimes you can see bears, which we're hoping and kind of not hoping to see bears, I guess. So we'll see what we can see. This time, Just Bandit is accompanying us. Bo is not fit for this hike. I think it's a little over two miles. Getting there. Well, it has turned out 
to be an awesome day. If you can't tell, I'm now in a t-shirt. It's probably getting close to, I don't know, 8.30 maybe? I forgot my watch back at the truck, but we came around a mountain, the sky's cleared, it got warm. This is awesome. I think we're over halfway there, so. We talked to some people that were hiking out. They said there was a bunch of salmon jumping up the falls and they said it was just awesome. So looking forward to it. We made it and it's super loud down there. So I'm not sure that you're gonna be able to hear us or not. No bears today. We got really lucky last time we were here and I'm pretty sure it was really late at night around the same time. And we saw a beautiful young brown bear, which was scary, but fun to see. There's not as many fish jumping today. It's a little bit earlier. We came a little bit later in the season. So we're gonna keep heading up and see what we can see. There's probably a bunch of people fishing down the river. Come on, Bennett, the old cone hound. This is such a treat. This is probably my favorite berry and we don't find it very often. This is a current, a red current. To me, these taste just like a really good pomegranate. Just like a pomegranate, yeah. yeah. Go. Maybe let's get real people. Let's get <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Watch, watch the top. She might go up. There she is, right there, right there. Oh yeah, we need to go. Let's go. She's coming fast. Bam, come on. Now. Now. Let's go. Go, man. We need to go. Well, we are out of danger, and I guess we got what we asked for, which was to see a bear. Saw a brown bear with lovely three cubs. That's like the actual type of bear I imagine you don't really want to see. We were kind of taking a different trail back and it's getting late. Eric spotted the bear first and she seemed a decently safe distance to get our camera gear out, but it was the strangest thing. She was coming like straight towards us, straight towards our cameras. And so we knew we had to go. We obviously can't stick around and started heading back and we were like hastily heading back and every time you turn around this bear was still there behind us with her three cubs thankfully we ran into some fellow alaskans and they handled a little better so the bear kind of got scared and went back down the river but me and eric and bandit were like let's skedaddle 
out of here. It was amazing. We've, I don't think we've ever seen, no, we have not ever seen a mom with babies like that. So pretty cool and scary as hell at the same time. <laughs> now it's getting to be the evening and we get to walk back the two and a half miles to the truck. And we know there's other bears out here, but hopefully they're along the river eating salmon and not thinking about eating me and Eric. That was a hike. I think we, we probably did close to six miles. Seeing that bear was just crazy. I saw it really far away and it's getting kind of dark and I didn't have my sunglasses on, which are prescription. And I was like, is that a bear or a huge stump? And it moved and I was like, that's a bear. And she was just like pushing us up the trail back to kind of where we came from and crazy situation, but we made it back. We're exhausted. Our coffee has finally cooled down enough where we can actually drink it. It's been like five hours so we got some coffee going it's probably like 11 o'clock we're gonna go to a little bit of a different area in this campgrounds it's called russian river campgrounds a little bigger parking lot that we like to go to and we're gonna make some food and hopefully get a little bit of sleep fortunately these waders leak very bad so they are full of cold ocean water from whittier good morning Probably about eight o'clock now. Slept for a few hours in the truck and we're going fishing. So we are at the Russian River and we are using Russian River flies. We are gonna be fishing for sockeye and sockeyes don't usually bite lures. So the technique that we're using is called flossing. We just drag the flies right along the water with a little weight or two. And what happens is it will hook the fish in the mouth and then you can retain that fish. And we switched our pole out for our heavy pole and 25 pound line. I'm actually using two weights today because the water is a little deeper and moving a little faster. We're gonna head down there and see if we can find a spot to fish. You got your fly back? I'm a fly back, but you got on. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Do you put one back like that when it spawned that much? No. See past the rock? That's a nice one. Nice silver one. Go. Russian River sockeye. <laughs> Do you want to get that to shore? I took like what? Two minutes <laughs> found a good hole so it's our third time fishing here in our experience the best thing to do with these fish is let them fight we came here the first time really new to alaska we were hooking them left and right it was a huge run and we were losing like every single fish they were snapping our lines because we were hooking them just trying to get them in if you're patient with these fish there's a really strong current and believe it or not that's a that's a small one for here so these fish are like rockets in this water so we got one I'm very happy with that it was an awesome fish okay i don't know what i have hooked okay that was a rocket he got off didn't snap my line dang that was a big one sockeyes fished here for just a couple hours really fun spot to fish it's beautiful out here we also ended up with a camera going in the river so we've been trying to dry our camera out seems like it might be working we're filming with it right now we don't really know but we're gonna head these up to the truck and I think we're gonna go to another fishing spot let's do it We 
We made it to Soldotna, Alaska. We've been here quite a few times. I have never in my life seen this place this packed. There's people everywhere. There's like events going on. Gas is like almost $6 a gallon, which I was not expecting. And it's a beautiful day. So we're on to the next adventure. We got our ice. Got to make one more pit stop at Freddy's. We're gonna go do some more fishing. We arrived at our final destination, which is Kasilaw. We are going dip netting. That is our primary purpose of this trip. So we are on the beach and we're looking for a spot. It is so slammed down here. We picked probably the busiest week in Alaska to do this. It is just madness. It's a weekend and it is prime fishing season. So that's why we're here too. I'm already all geared up and ready to go. So we're gonna get out there and see what we can do. Gosh, a twin. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, we're ready to rock. Shh. Look at that fish. There's probably a spot. I think that's the best spot right there, over by that boat. Good luck, young lady. Thank you. Hope I don't fall in here with the camera too. From the looks of it, people are catching fish. So every time Eric and I have come here, we've been pretty successful in just one night of fishing, like usually 10 plus hours or so. We're allowed 35 fish for our household, so we'll see what we can do. I don't know if we're exact looking to take home that many. Oh my gosh. I don't know which side it's on though. I always make that mistake. All right, we're soccer. It's a little one. It's still beautiful though. I gotta Fish get, on. I gotta get back out here. Okay, that's our fourth fish, and we caught a flounder. Look at him. Oh, I'm gonna have to show you him. He's adorable. Isn't he cute? You wanna release him? Yep. You're free. Switching off today, Eric and I, Eric's gonna go after I catch a certain amount. He's gonna be up and see how many he can catch.
All right, we're coming into a little bit of a break here. Eric's gonna run the fish back and grab his net because we wanna get some more fishing done. Things are kind of slowing down and the low tide is going to be soon. So we're gonna have a long distance to walk. Pretty good so far. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. I'm not sure what time it is, but we're gonna keep fishing. Gosh. Oof. Tangled mess. Okay, I think we got, uh, 15. this makes 15 total. Arrows, I've caught four. <laughs> okay, you caught the other ones more than me. Okay. Oh no, oh, oh no, right oh, it's even, pull your head up, pull. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> you put the... Oh, oh it ain't, ain't going easy. Did you get it? <gasps> Just calm down, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're gonna throw up. <laughs> You're making up for lost times, man. That's like yeah, three in three good. minutes. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. There's still a lot of boats coming in because they, they don't have to wrap up shop till 10. 10's when their uh, things can come in. I felt three bumps, three bumps. And I saw one and I saw that one jumping over there quite a bit further. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I got one. Get him. I got one. Woo! Heck yeah. Is it? No. Nice job, hon. You got another one? Look at that one. Nice one. Little finesse. Uh, I don't know, I can't tell. Eric, we got problems here. I decided to go through. Well, I think we're gonna call it quits. It's probably about 9 p.m. We're completely exhausted. We're cold, we are wet, and we have a ton of salmon. So here's my last load right here. I think Ariel's got another six on her stringer. We're leaving here with 26 sockeye salmon. We're gonna get the truck loaded up and we're actually gonna ditch this place because it is like one big party here and we want to get some sleep and we'll see you guys in the morning. I hope I can make it back to the truck. Did you have fun? Thanks for catching so many fish. I know I'm cold too. We can run the heater for a little, right? Get get warm. The fish just barely fit? Yeah, they barely fit. Whew, man, we're... Yeah. Look at my feet. <laughs> Mud and sand. This is the dirtiest fishing spot I've ever been to. Every year. Well, our fishing adventure hasn't ended yet. We are on the beautiful Kenai. We just couldn't help but pass up another fishing opportunity. We actually passed through Soldatna yesterday, went dip netting, and then today we made a pit stop for the boys, talked to some fishermen. They had good luck this morning, and we have a teeny tiny bit of room left in our ice chest, so we're gonna see if we can fill it. Here, I got the net right here. I can help you. It's not fighting too hard. It's big, yeah. Oh, it got off. It Did it snap it? It snapped it. Let it, let it bite, right? Get it to shore.
I cannot believe it. I'm so excited. This is my sockeye from the Kenai River. It is a fatty, total fatty. I do not know how I got that in by myself. I'm a horrible netter. I missed it probably like five times. We worked so hard for this fish. Eric and I took turns back and forth for about probably like close to two plus hours. So this is definitely more than enough for me. I'm stoked to take this home. This has been a fantastic trip. Alaska is amazing in the summer, hence why we like to take these journeys. So much sightseeing, wildlife, the fishing, everything. And this river is spectacular. It's a very famous river, the Kenai River on the peninsula. It's got this crystal blue, like aquamarine water. And it comes from the glaciers, I believe, and that's why it has that color to it. We now have 35 fish in total. We have a few hours of a drive home. We've got to make it there because we now have some work to do. We have some fish to process. This is a fat one. Good job. Man, that was amazing. That's a battle wound. All right, I think we're ready. Now it's full. <laughs> All right, we made it back yesterday with our fish. Eric and I are just totally beat. We processed these late into the wee hours of the night and morning yesterday and today. We've got quite a bit to do. The trip was 600 miles. We got back probably a little bit after the 48 hour mark. So we weren't gone for that long. Pretty, pretty insane stuff there. And we have a lot more to do with this fish. So we're gonna tackle that today.
How many cups is that? A little two. under two. We could start with that and then mix it up. That's it looks like. Because the fish shot, we ended up with some extra nutrients and blood is an awesome fertilizer for plants that like nitrogen. This is our celery, so it is going to appreciate that very much. You need a bigger smoker. Apparently, yeah, I never thought I'd see the day, but. A little more go. Completely full smoker. These are the bellies that Ariel cut out of the fish. These, along with all of these small strips that we cut up here, have all been brined in sugar, molasses, and a bunch of salt. Rinsed them off. We got them on the smoker. We're about to fire this thing up. this one you did the tail piece yeah he must have gotten mixed in oh that's a big old piece huh it's a tail it's like a fillet look at that perfect you know it's shiny there hey where'd the oh you got it We got our salmon processed and we've already opened up the other pressure canner. They look awesome. We ended up with 32 jars. They're a little bit dark this time and we think that's because of the brown sugar and the molasses. So they still look really, really tasty. I'm really excited to open that up. We went a little bit fancy with these. We added garlic, a sun-dried tomato and basil and oregano to each of these jars. We're making dinner now, and of course, salmon is on the menu. Eric is making us some salmon burgers. That one's bubbling. Do you want quite a bit of lettuce on yours? I did. Yeah. I did. What the heck is that? <laughs> Look at that. Heads or tails, baby? Looks like chicken. Hmm. I don't think you included the dirt, too. There was a bug in one of them I picked out, too. There was a tiny slug, too. Hopefully he's gone. There's like a little caterpillar there. Well, this looks fantastic. Yes, a lot of hard work and a lot of ingredients went into this burger. So we got salmon burgers. We have homemade broche buns that Errol made. She also made us a really good dressing. It's almost like a pesto, but it's cilantro and lime. We have skins from the salmon on there that I fried up like little crispy skins. A bunch of stuff from the garden. Probably some more stuff on there. It's gonna be delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of stuff on there. Awesome trip down to the Kenai. I always look forward to going down there. The fishing is just out of this world and I can't wait to go back again. 
And the sightseeing is awesome too. Already mentioned, but this is a massive state. So fishing, we're really grateful to have that opportunity to be able to travel around and get to fish so many different places. Just because you can hop to and fro and fish doesn't necessarily mean you can actually have like a crazy amount of fish on you. There are possession laws. Yep. So you have to abide by those as well. It was a wild trip. It was a blast. Very excited to add that to our 2020 summer bucket. Definitely. Cross it off the list, I guess. And now it's time. Eat. Let's eat. That was a really good onion. That is a big burger. Cheers. To the Kenai, right? I don't even know how to eat it. Yeah, I'm gonna go from, I'm gonna to go from the west end. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna go with the head, yeah. <laughs> the oh, head yeah. nod. That was good. Yeah. I haven't had right. lettuce on a burger in forever. I really got the... Um, the dressing. I just got like I pretty much ate bread and dressing I think in that first bite. Mm. That is delicious. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. We'll see you guys next time. That's really good time bite too. Mm. Burger but salmon. I really like the herb dressing. Yeah, it's like a pesto burger. Mm -hmm. Freaking good. Yeah, it's like a pesto burger. Fried egg would be good on here. Some like honey and an egg. Oh yeah, an egg. G'day mate, we're down here on the walkabout. Doing the walkabout on the outback.